Baldur's Gate has finally had an issue that has affected many players of the game that left many players upset, but they did it much better than any other studio. However, before we go over what Baldur's Gate 3 did, let's look at some studios that did not do well when it came to an issue they had with their game. Over the course of the past year, we've had a lot of games come out from AAA developers that have had glaring, glaring issues that have been on release. We had Star Wars Jedi Survivors coming out with, oh, we're sorry that, you know, there, you know, there's some performing issues on high-end machines or specific configurations. Uh, it's happening on these specific things with high-end GPUs coupled with lower CPUs. And we don't really know how long it's going to take and where it's going to go, but we're working on it. Uh, not really going over the specifics of why a game of this caliber, a triple A game, if a huge title is having these massive issues on launch with people not being able to run their game. It is a problem and something that they should have had smoothed out for higher end machines. Specifically because people who have higher end machines are probably not going to have a bad CPU and a really good GPU. It seems like a cop out for them. So we have a triple A developer here saying, well, you know, oopsies, but uh, there could be a whole lot of reasons why it's like this. And we didn't get it all nice and ironed out before release. And then we have one of the worst ones this year. That was when the Lord of the Rings Golem came out. And when Lord of the Rings Golem came, did its like gameplay release and its stuff like that, I knew that it was going to be bad by looking at it. Like sometimes you look at a trailer of the game and you're like, mm, that's going to be a bad one. And I felt that way about Golem way before the game ever released. And when it did release, it was worse than what I could ever expected. They had massive issues in the game, massive bugs, like huge clipping issues of stuff like coming through walls that are not supposed to be there and you know there are things like we're sorry we you, we didn't meet the expectations that we set for ourselves or our dedicated community please you know we're apologizing and i believe the first release of this i could be misremembering actually had some typos in the apology statement and they had to put uh the tweet up again i don't remember if that is 100% correct, but I could be misremembering. But again, it's like, oh, you know, we're working on the bugs and the technical issues and we're committed to this. We deeply apologize. And it's like, again, okay, you're sorry for this thing that happened, but why did it happen? Why? You're a big developer. These big problems shouldn't exist on launch. Is it because you didn't have enough time and you don't want to throw, you know, someone under the bus? Or is it because you rushed production? Or is it because you just didn't care and you just wanted the money from us and just hoped that you know there would be enough people around that didn't do refunds that you still made a sizable amount, but they did so poorly? I don't think that this probably was profitable at all. Then we had Diablo 4. And Diablo 4 had a patch that came out. Its first patch, uh, I believe, being for the first season of the game massively massively uh nerfed pretty much every single class in the game and when they did this people were pissed there was like hundreds of thousands of people inside or over a hundred thousand people inside the uh diablo 4 subreddit complaining about what has happened and how much how, like they they take more damage they do less damage they're dying more frequently their build isn't as good etc 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 the time goes on because they nerfed all these multipliers but then raised the base damage but it came nowhere near to where they were before and it was ended up being a significant nerf nerf which makes the game way slower to do and if you're playing an action rpg you want the game to be kind of fast you want to be able to move fast so all of a sudden Something you were able to kill in a few minutes or a minute, now it takes a few minutes to kill, or you just can't kill them anymore. That's a huge, massive problem. And it was so bad, and the backlash was so terrible that the devs came up and then apologized and went over why. But at the end of the day, it's like you guys still did this. You knew what you were doing. This wasn't just an out of a left field kind of thing. Because I think eventually there was some quarter reports. Uh, that were released later that they wanted people to spend more time in Diablo 4. And so their intentions to change game mechanics and damage and things like that 
is what led to this decision. So more people would spend longer time in there instead of making really good content that makes people want to stay in there. Now, we let's get to Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate had an issue where they had a hotfix come out. There was a bug in the hotfix and then they undeployed the bug so things would you know people wouldn't have their game crashing all the time and when this happened anyone who had updated to hotfix 4 before they reverted and removed that update undeployed it was not able to play their save if they had closed their game saved it and then relaunched because then their game version would be a different version than the one their save is so if you wanted to play you either had to wait, lose hours of time, or make a new save and play on that, which is really bad. But it didn't actually take them that long to fix it. By the next morning, it was fixed. The hotfix was redeployed, and everyone saved from that pastime would have been fine if you just waited or didn't play or did something else. And... There's something special about how Larian Studios handled this that I think is how all studios should handle this because it makes the consumer feel good to have the reason of why certain things happen. So let's go over the redeployed hotfix post that they made. Hello everyone. Yesterday we had a rollback on hotfix 4 because of a rare compiler issue. To avoid this happening again, we're changing the way we deploy future patches. This is good. So they acknowledge there's an issue. And they're going to change how they do stuff so that this issue will never happen again. That's a positive note. Players who had downloaded Hotfix 4 were unable to continue from their Hotfix 4 saves. I was one of those people. Five and a half hours I would have lost if I didn't want to wait and wanted to go back to the old hot, the old Hotfix or old update. Uh, once we had rolled back the patch, while this is not okay, rolling back the patch in order to diagnose the problem and limit those exposed to it was the lesser of two evils. They understand that no matter what, you it was gonna be a problem that people were gonna have. It was either people were gonna experience a lot of crashes and just keep dealing it, which might end up to something worse, like maybe a corrupted save because of the compiling issues or something like that, or going back, which is still bad, but at least they can fix the issue so more people won't have this problem. And there will be some people locked out uh, for about a half a day or so. And anybody who didn't uh, have the update done by the time that they played would no longer have this issue because it was already undeployed. We truly appreciate your patience and understanding while we work to understand the problem, or while we work to understand the problem. The situation is remedied now with the re-release of Hot Six, Hotfix 4, and we recognize the frustration caused by this and want to apologize. This is why we're changing things up. All of you should know... Or all of you should now be able to continue your adventures, but essentially here's what happened, and this is what I love. They're not just saying, oh, we're sorry, things happened, we're going to fix it, that's it. They went over the exact reason of what happened so we can understand and be a little bit more empathetic to their plight, and they're not treating us like dum-dums and trying to give us some other answer, like Star Wars, like, oh, high-end PCs, you know, and, you know, components. Every PC game has to deal with that. It's not an excuse. It's something that you cheapened out on and that's why you had these issues. But for Baldur's Gate, they went over exactly why this happened. Hotfix 4 went through rigorous QA pipeline that was confirmed as a candidate for yesterday's release. However, we triggered a rebuild of the version uh, relatively last minute to change the version number. The version that was uh, cooked was unfortunately plagued by a compiler corruption, which was causing certain exceptions that would normally wouldn't cause crashes to you guessed cause crashes. Since the compiler issue like that was extremely rare, we weren't prepared for it, we should have been. We messed up. It didn't help that it happened at the worst possible time of day, but luckily we have studios in multiple countries overnight for Europe. Our teams in Canada and then Malaysia were worked to diagnose what was wrong and what and so that work could begin redeploying a fixed version on the, for, of the hotfix. To avoid this happening in the future, we'll make sure that any changes the future candidates, no matter how small or innocuous, will go through our full comprehensive QA pipeline, which include a global in-house QA team, automated testing, testing, unit test, and save game uh, uh, compatibility testing. Amazing! Treated your customers like you're valued, telling them with the exact issue, what went wrong, explaining it to them so that they can understand, 
telling them what they're going to do so it never happens again. Even if you don't understand the jargon that they've used and development process and things like that, you can still come to look at this and go, wow, you know, even if I don't quite get it, I appreciate that they took the time to try to explain it to me. And that's what I really, really like about Larian. And Sven and the whole team that were working on Baldur's Gate 3 is that they give a crap. They care. They don't want their their customers and fans to have a bad time. So they'll try to explain why they're doing certain things. And the way that they explain it in here makes a lot of sense. So even though that Baldur's Great did have a boo-boo, it did have a problem with launch, and that there are other bugs that exist in the game that they're working on with these hotfixes, it still is a really, really refreshing way to communicate to your audience. And uh, I think it's really good that even though that they had this boo-boo, this bad thing, this crap happen, right? They were able to still come out looking very, very good because of how they reacted. And that just goes to show just how good Larian is, how good Baldur's Gate 3 is. Even if you're not a fan of the game, you have to kind of commend how they handled this, in my opinion. But that'll be all for today. So I will see you guys later. Bye.